Okay, hole number nine. Number nine. It's a two-part question. They're unrelated, but I had 20 questions and only 18 holes, so this is going to be a double one. First one, uh, what is your favorite gimmicky hole? Like where someone actually builds a clown face and you have to actually go through the clown mouth or they put in a, a, a giant piece of like construction tunnel. The tiki course at uh, the block house is awesome. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, there should be more of those around. I think that would be uh, a great introduction to um, the unknown disc golfers and they could play. Um, it's like miniature golf. Miniature golf. Correct. And but. Uh, the t tiki course at the block house in Virginia is in inches. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's a nice spin. I, I think uh, that would be it a, um, so okay. any, uh, any hole over there. Any hole over yeah, there yeah. is good. Yep. All right. And what is your favorite non-disc golf something you've seen on a course? So you're on a course, but it also is known for something else, historical or anything. Yeah. I played a disc golf course at Turtle Creek Nudist Resort in Coldwater, Michigan. And to see people just natural as a jaybird, you know, just so natural. And I played in the buff. That was the coolest thing. I mean, I didn't look at them wrongly, but I think that was the coolest thing because in my opinion, I feel that if people didn't wear clothes, there will be less people uh, making fun of other people because clothes hide their uh, real body and if ever everybody was in the buff you wouldn't be you wouldn't laugh at other people because you have the same thing that they have are you do you know the story of honey bear in Peru, indiana no I don't. oh my god then you're about to find out <laughs> quick history oldest course is okro second oldest is likely la mirada but there's about 20 or so courses that lay claim to number three because ed would sell it at this parks conference here but then he went installed till later here and they designed the blah blah and then they keep good records so there's 20 courses that all get to be course number three uh, mm -hmm. and they may be right yeah one of those is honey bear in Peru, indiana like from 1977 i think 78 mm -hmm. and honey bear has always been a private course forever so it was a private piece of land but people played it for 40 something years and it just got bought out by a nudist resort nice so the Potentially third course in the country, third course in the country, Honey Bear. Uh, you can play, but you got to play naked. I think that's the most in the spirit of old school frisbee of any course in the world because uh, it was. You know, it's, a, it's originally a hippie sport. So, all right, here you go. This is the basket right there. This is a righty hole. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Bill Vaughn. Stratus hole. It, no, that, that it is Stratus hole for, for Mr. Bill Vaughn. Right. Bill Vaughn is Mr. Stratus. Look at that. That almost got through the middle of the, the thickest part of the trees. All right. I love you, Bill. Oh, everyone loves Bill. Right? Except for the people that can't stand him. Hey. I love Bill. Come on, baby. Please go in. No, I'm going to give him this round. And Bill Vaughn is a 2024 um, Ohio Disc Golf Hall of Famer. Well, no, I'm a 2024 Disc Golf Hall, Pro, Pro Disc Golf Hall of Famer. Right, thank I'm, you. I'm going in this year. That's so cool. I know. Isn't Congratulations. Thank you. I know, I'm excited. Well deserved. Thank you. Hole number 10, what's the most unlikely friendship you formed on a course? A lizard king, you know, I got to oh, hang out with Mark Ellis and I, you know, I'd, he's the best. He is. And so, um, you know, lawyers aren't in my circle normally. Well, that, and that is something about disc golf is that the different socioeconomic backgrounds. I mean, honestly, like, I mean, nowadays in 2024, if, if people don't care about like race and stuff like that anymore. But but socioeconomic, there is some divide, and certainly there's political divides. That's why I hate politics and disc golf. They're like, God, I wish people just like play disc golf. Well, should we go back? Remember the old days when like you live next door to someone for 30 years and you have no idea who they voted for, and, right. and that's the way it should be. Absolutely, that was so much better back then. So, yeah. but the fact is, is now we do know who you vote for, or if you don't vote, and and uh, but in disc golf, we still don't care. 
What course in, in the 2,500 courses did you lose the most discs on? Um, I don't normally lose discs because I use my trusty 150 gram Starlight Sidewinder. Okay, wait a second. Is there a End of a Champion Tour Series Sidewinder to celebrate your 2500 course? Sam Ferens? Uh, how about that, Sammy? Um, you know Sam. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah I had his poster um, on my uh, uh, in my man cave for the longest time. Oh, yeah. I, you know? I, yeah, me too. I don't normally lose discs. If I do, it's in the drink. Or, um, but throwing my sidewinders, they go right down the middle, or they find the fairway. Okay, there you go. There's, there's your. That was a free plug that you ought to get paid for. Tell me about your favorite act of human kindness you've seen in disc golf. There's just so many good people playing disc golf uh, that are just have the kindest of hearts, and they're so giving. Um, to to list them all, I'd be here all day. I'd be here for. Uh, 11 uh, months, you know, uh, listing them all because uh, yeah, there, there, there are, are so lot. many. And that's that's a beautiful thing about our sport is, you know, um, it's um, we give, you know, whether you're working on the course, um, the, the park departments don't take care of these courses, the disc golfers do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, and um, there's just mm -hmm. so many givers out there. I had really great leaders like Larry. Leroy and Sharon Jenkins, mm -hmm. Itch, uh, from Medina, uh, Chris Pellegrino, mm -hmm. um, uh, just so many. Robbie Bryan, um, in my roots of my family tree, that um, um, showed me the way of how to um, um, take care of disc golf and to um, give back the love that you get from the sport. And I think that's necessary for everybody Everybody playing, if you see a stick on the fairway, throw it all to the side. That's one less thing that somebody has to do. It's not that hard. All right, there you go. So, too many good people to list. That's a fair enough answer. All right, there's the basket. Don't screw it up. I <laughs> love it. Bring it. Sing it. Oh, my God. Shout it. If that had been, oh, that was a good shot. It's right in the middle of the fairway, yeah. like I said. Rod is a member of the 51 Club. Yes. So if he gets a whole one, I have to give him $5, everybody. Yep. Oh, my God. That's, that's just terrible. Thank God 10,000 people didn't see it. What is the funniest thing you've seen on a course? It was funny on me. It wasn't on him. Uh, Larry Clifford Kirk and I were playing the Canyons in um, Illinois and um, he wanted to go a certain way and I was like, yeah, that's not the best way. And he head over heels, tumbled solid down this hill and came up all dirty. And I'm like, what are you, are you okay, Larry? And he's like, and he just bounced up and I'm like, hey, you know, and I'm like, that was, the I mean, I was laughing. But it wasn't funny. But it was funny. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. All right, oh, we're on it. hole 11. And actually, I missed my putt on the last hole, so. Uh, I really had the box. And you and you made the putt, so you're up. With my new juju putter. There's no ready golf right now. You're, this is, you are in the box this time. Very humbling. Yes, you crushed it. Nice. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, it turned a little much. I thought, see, I thought that one was in. All right, hold number 12. What course do you miss the most? But I'm going to tell you, you are not allowed to say Laurel Springs. I know that would be your go-to. Yeah. So let's give the nod to another course. Is there another course that is no longer in the ground that you miss? Remsen Corners in Medina. Uh, the never, Jenkins never family um, did a lot of work to get that um, course uh, in the ground. And that was such a sweet piece of property. I would love to see that course back. That was special. I got video of that course of us playing um, in um, in the snow. And that was fun. That was, that was a good, good time. All right. All right. Well, let's go ahead and let's see your 
Let's see your Stratus. No. No Sidewinder. Sidewinder. <laughs> Sorry, Bill Vaughn. <laughs> Well, I heard that was a family tree, so I'm just part of the family here. I think it's Travis for this. <laughs> okay, here we go. I believe. <laughs> it's the same tree. All right, so I'm going to put you definitely on the spot here. We're on hole number 13. 13 and this is just going to have to be an estimate. Because right at this moment um, you have played now well you're about to play 2500 courses which means you played about 18 percent of the courses in the world there was a time in my life where i had played 100 percent of the courses in the world because i played oak grove when it was the only course <laughs> in 1976 nice. right um and so there was a time when greg hosfeld i don't know i'm going to estimate that he had probably played 70 percent of the courses in the world at, at one point um, do you have any idea at what point of you playing courses was the, the, the most percentage of courses you had played? Because at some point you weren't bagging courses as fast as they were going in. Right. And you're 18%, no matter how much you play, is going to keep going down. Right. So do you know, do, like, was there ever a point when you'd played 30%, 40%? I, I at one time played... Um, twenty three percent of the courses in the world. Okay, so you do have, you do have a gauge. Okay, yeah. so twenty three percent, which is ridiculous, because now you're at eighteen percent, which is far more courses. Right. Disc golf course review, which I go by. Okay. Um, has those stats. Um, it also keeps stats in specific states. So I've played um, four hundred and fifty different courses in Ohio out of um, you know, probably five hundred different courses. Probably played about ninety. 3% of the courses in Ohio. Um, so um, one of my things about collecting courses is playing at least 10 courses in every state where actable. Um, and uh, so that's Fair. on this particular trip. Um, this is my 73rd course I've played on since August 31st. And um, um, so I went to Connecticut, New Hampshire, uh, Massachusetts, and Vermont and played um, the needed courses to get to 10 courses and then I went past that on the cardinal course on the cardinal course I got you <laughs> Oh, it's overstable. in the middle of fairway. Well, it's an overstable disc on a tunnel shot, so I tried to get fancy S turny, which I would never do for in a tournament, but anyways, it's all you. Hey, everybody out there in uh, uh, Stokely land and then disc golf land, I just can't emphasize uh, um, how much uh, an honor it is to share my 25th, um, 2,500 course with Scott today. This is just so awesome. This was all planned yesterday no, on he, a whim. He called up Pat Govain last night says, hey, Pat, is your course open tomorrow? I want to play my 2,500 course there. And Pat's like, yeah, you know Scott's here. And I'm and, like, I can dig it. I love it. Yep. And I was just thinking, I need content. So it worked out just perfect. Yeah. The, the universe <laughs> brought us together. Sidewinder. Middle of the fairway. <laughs> Hole 14. Have you traveled outside the U.S. to play? And I'm going to call uh, Alaska and Hawaii outside the U.S. because it's my channel, my rules. Um, and they played. So we'll start with Canada, which is obvious. But then I want to hear a, a little bit about your outside the U.S. disc golf travels. I played Alaska and Hawaii in the same year. Um, well, within a not in the same calendar year, but within a 12-month period. I played a few courses. In England, uh, including uh, Derek Robbins' course in Leamington Spa, Essex University, and I played Beamister, uh, which was is one of my favorite courses in the world. Um, Where is that? Uh, it's in uh, uh, it's Wickcombe Farms in Beamister, uh, England. It was like a, a hostel, per se. Uh, Toby, Toby Green, it was Dr. Green, 
and Toby Green was his son. And uh, I stayed there and played that course. Uh, and I've played five Canadian provinces. We gotta talk to you about Southeast Asia. Cause it's so, once you buy your plane ticket, it's so cheap. Mm -hmm. There's so many courses to play, but you can get on a train and then get a hotel and then eat three meals and it'll cost you like $6 for the day. Wow. For, for all of it together. Yeah. Like, not, not exaggerating. So like once you get over there, you could actually play a lot of golf. By the way, so this is a, this is the hardest hole in the course by far. You go straight basically until you see the berm up there. Yeah. And then you shoot left another like 200. 50 feet or something. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a like good legit par four. It's a righty hole. There's no such thing as a righty <laughs> hole. It's a sidearm hole for you. If, you. if you don't have a sidearm, that's your damn fault. Right? All right. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, look at that. <laughs> I'm going to get a birdie with that terrible drive. I'd rather be lucky, ruck, lucky than good. <laughs> I'd rather be lucky than good. Lucky. Rucky. Rut row. Rut row. Rut row. Turn on to rough row. Don't try to throw it in the rough. Oop, it went in the rough. Actually, that's not that bad. <laughs> what is your favorite region? So we're not going by even state lines. Favorite, favorite region of the country to play in. And I'm going to disallow you from saying Ohio because I know you have all the personal connections here. My favorite place has to be uh, Michigan. Because wait, wait, uh, wait! You, you, you said you're from Ohio. Correct. Okay. Do you want? Do you I want love to... Michigan. I'm one of the few that love Michigan. And do we uh, need to cut you, this out? No, 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 no. The what? But the people in Ohio are going to lose their shit. They're not going to be able to. Damn, <laughs> damn. Let's, we need to talk. Hold on a second. You, oh, this is not good. This, this is, is not good. I'm going to lose. I'm going to literally lose subscribers. The reason why I like going up to Michigan is I stop in Ludington to take the car ferry over to Wisconsin and bypass driving through Chicago on the SS Badger. Okay. I do that numerous times. No, the, the Michigan crushes it for courses, obviously, and the Metro Parks are have, have done such a good job. I mean, I, I think Discraft had as much to do with this as anybody, honestly, mm -hmm. cultivating that relationship with the park system in Michigan. But in the earlier days when uh, it was very popular to push back against disc golf, the relationship in Michigan had been built for disc golf to flourish in the metro parks. Like, oh, you're not going to destroy our parks and destroy nature. People will enjoy our parks more. Like, like believe it or not, that 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 was a learned idea for parks departments. I see an ace here, so why don't you go ahead and ace this one? It's just right there. Okay. You go first. Ace it. Okay. Ace on the twenty fifth hundredth course. Oh my God, did you get it? That was actually really close. That was a good shot though. All right. Get it, get it. Oh, did you see that? I did. I think it went through the chains, through the basket. So close. All right, hole 16. You are three holes away from 2,500, which means you are not allowed to die in the next 13 minutes because if you do I'm just gonna be honest I ain't counting it and you'll never get to 2,500 so you think you can make it I can um, okay. I'm, I, playing, I, I'm playing for all the men and women that never came home and, and I'm sharing the fairways with you I can do this okay I believe I believe you I believe in you um, thank you that means a lot coming from you thank, thank you number 16 do you have a favorite lost disc story I throw 86 softies and uh, they're, in a, uh, they're a nice uh, turnover soft putter. And um, so um, I was missing a, a softy uh, once upon a time. And uh, I was playing league. Um, I'm not going to mention the course name. But uh, I saw the rim in somebody's bag. And I'm like, hey, can I see that disc? And... Uh, here, it was my disc. How I got in his bag, how I got out of my bag, I don't care. But I took the disc out of his bag and I'm like, look, that's my phone number. Uh, matter of fact, it was this disc, right? Everything on there, and it was in his bag. I took it out of his bag and I'm like, this is mine. True story. And then you punched him in the face and... and 
you 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 use violence to no to... i'm a very uh non-violent person okay yeah okay well well then you're a non-violent person but you're a crap storyteller because it was it would have been a much better story had it ended with you punching him in the head right i'm just kidding i don't know he probably found it on accident had no idea It's a part tree. <laughs> it's a part uh, tree and a pear. It's a part tree and a pear. I'm in the far. Okay, you. I have a feeling you're. It's a part tree family hole. Why wow, you just dated both of us? You <laughs> realized you've, that you've heard of that? The partridge family. Yeah. I used to watch the partridge family. Yeah. Of nice. course. Right. Of course. Right. Susan Day. Mwah. During these 2,500 rounds, have any major historical world events, I guess technically they're not historical when they happen, but uh, events that would become a, considered historical events, have any of those happened while you were playing? Do you have any memory of like finishing the round, looking at your phone going, oh my God. Yeah, I was up in uh, the Michigan woods and just having a time of my life playing with the Canadians and and the Michigan guys and my buddy Wild Bill Chiro, he had uh, some of his uh, homemade uh, spruce tree beer. And, um, you know, we were just living it up. And then, um, you know, nothing mattered but disc golf and having fun. And, um, and when I got back home, everybody was like, did you hear what happened to O.J. Simpson? And I'm like, no, what happened? And they're like, where have you been? And I'm like, playing disc golf in the woods of Michigan. Like what, like during the, like the car chase or the... The whole, yeah, the, yeah, the car chase, yeah. Okay, and, so that's actually really funny. I was in Pontiac, Michigan, um, right not, before a tournament. Not too far from I was where in I Pontiac, was. yeah, is in Michigan. We were watching live on the news. That's what I like about disc golf. It just, um, I, I can just, well, I don't have a TV at home. Um, I don't, I, I, I live and breathe disc golf, and um, I really don't care what uh, happens in the world as long as no one gets killed. You know, I, I wish, uh, imagine if there was peace and harmony in this world, how w wonderful this world would be. And I, before I die, I hope that happens. All right, so we're on hole 17. This is my last chance to get an ace. So you can ace it first, but I'm gonna ace it after you. And it is straight ahead, yawn way down there. No, way down there, you can reach this one. <laughs> you absolutely can reach this. Okay, here we go. Yep. If you turn it over enough, you'll get to the hole. See, and you didn't turn it over enough. Yeah. I'm like the greatest caddy ever, and, and if my if my players would listen to me. Scott, you can caddy for me anytime. I'm an ace with it, my last chance. Oh, see, you know what I did? I, I didn't turn it over, <laughs> just like I told you. You went to my red box. <laughs> yep. First. Final question, what is your favorite disc golf hole? It probably sit, go back to Laurel Springs, hole, hole number one. Hole one, yeah. yeah. Now you it's, tee it's off special. from a, a valley, I mean a hill, and then you had to throw your shot over a, a, a knoll where the driveway went up to uh, Bill Bowen's uh, house, and then the hole number one was at the X of the different trees. So. I mean, um, that is probably my favorite hole of all time. It, yeah. it was epic. I wish it would. I think we should, uh, as disc golfers, uh, because the tee pads are probably still there. Yeah, raise the money and buy the property. Or uh, just have a tournament out there, raise enough money to have a tournament out there again, or once a year, oh. because it's uh, epic. I, I think it would stand the test of time with even with today's discs. So I got bad news for you. I'm not going to join you for hole 18. Aww. So like any good sports commentator, I know when to shut the hell up and let people watch the game unfold. All right. Hey, thanks again for sharing the fairways with me today, Scott. 2,500 with Scott Stokely. Let's give it up to Scott. I knew I had a Yankee shot in me today. 
Oh yeah. I throw uh, at least one bad throw a day, and that was it. Uh, that's funny. And if you can't laugh at yourself, then you're taking this game way too serious. So now I'm going to go over here where all the bears hang out, and I'm going to um, go look for my disc because I don't want to lose it. So if a bear pops out, Scott, um, I'm going to stand behind you because you look as big as a bear. Okay. I couldn't make this easy, could I? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm throwing sidearm, that's when I'm in, you know I'm in trouble. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> this is hilarious everybody. I normally I am uh, going down the fairway, but yeah, I want to make it a little harder for Dan. I didn't want it any other way. Okay, I see the basket. So, I am going to go with the Stratus X and uh, hopefully I'll make it for a par. Alright, yeah. I want to thank Pat Govain, former commissioner of the PDJ, for uh, letting me stay at his bunkhouse tonight and for having me uh, have the honor to play my 2,500th course at his property and uh, leaving some of Manfred Bowie's ashes at the bell for, you know, this is such a special place forever in my heart. So cool. And uh, so here we go now. Yes. Jesse, Manfred, Mom, Alan, Leroy, Dave, Eric, Eggie. I love you. I love you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. <laughs>